Welcome everybody to church this morning. My name is Penny Gillis and um, I'm elder on duty today and we're very pleased that you could all be here for our Thanksgiving service this morning. We hope you can hang around after worship and come to coffee just down there in the hall. And as you can see you've got lots and lots of announcements but I'll maybe just draw your attention to a couple and hope you'll go home or today in the queue just read all those announcements there. The flowers this morning have been placed in the sanctuary in memory of Melvin and Fiona Mercer by Michelle and Joe and Julia Craig. Also, there's a celebration next Sunday afternoon at Tiffany Village celebrating Jim Steele's birthday, a significant birthday, and um, he would like everybody, as many as possible, to come to Tiffany Village between 2.30 and 4.30 to celebrate with him. And one last little one concerns the AMS on Tuesday night. I would ask anybody who's coming to AMS to please forage in your closet or your drawers for an orange shirt or an orange sweater. We plan to wear those in recognition of students of the residential school. So that's Tuesday night, orange shirt or an orange sweater. Thank you. Let us worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful song. Let us enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Please be seated. And I welcome you here on this day and thank you for coming out to be with us. We will begin our worship with an introit from the choir, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. your turn to sing. The opening hymn is number 425, 
We praise you, O God. Number 425. Let us join together in our prayers of approach and confession. Let us pray. Eternal God, on this weekend of national thanksgiving, we gather to praise you for the gifts which you have lavished upon us. We have abundant clean water to quench our thirst and food to satisfy our hunger, nourish our bodies, and give us enjoyment and occasion to celebrate with the people we love. Yesterday we felt the warm sun on our faces and it was good. Today we woke to the sound of rain on our roof and it is also good. We hear the roar of the sea, the rush of the wind. We see the trees dressed in autumn splendor. We have dreams in our brains, love in our hearts, laughter on our lips, and all of it is very good. We thank you that in all your beautiful creation and through all your displays of power, we can stop and listen and hear that still, small voice comforting us, calling us, and guiding us to you. As we gather here today from many places, we unite in giving you thanks for the community in which we live and to which we commit ourselves in service as your people. We thank you for the people of this place of different ages, races, languages, and lifestyles, all of whom contribute to this community, each in our own way. We praise you for this land of abundance, for hills, rivers, and forests, for rich soil and rare minerals, for vibrant cities and quiet countryside. We also thank you for things unseen, for a shared history of faith which has forged a country where freedom is enjoyed. We remember our ancestors, who dreamed of a nation conceived in liberty and who carved a community here in St. John's out of this rocky, windswept land. Together they created this place and entrusted it to us. Enable us to live together in harmony, to work together in peace, to strive to give our children an even finer community than the one we inherited. And though we are filled with thanksgiving for all these blessings, we are sorry for the ways in which these dreams have sometimes been realized. Often, we take you and your blessings for granted. We ignore you and forget your ways. Out of anger, we say the wrong things and hurt others with our words or with our silence. Out of selfishness, we accuse and blame others for faults which lie within ourselves. Out of ignorance, we assume that everybody ought to be like us, in culture, 
lifestyle, and philosophy, and consider ourselves superior to those who are simply different. Forgive us for being content when our land is stained by hopelessness. Forgive us for being blind to needless misery. Forgive us when apathy and greed has calloused our social conscience and our concern for the environment. Help us to look to your example, to pause before we speak and act, to hear your voice and hear your command to live as you want us to live. Transform us through your spirit and give us the strength and grace we need to live lives pleasing to you this day and every day. And hear us now as we pray together, using the familiar words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. (coughs) Hear the assurance of pardon. God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Through Jesus, we are free to love one another, to forgive one another, and to be forgiven. We are given a new life. With full and thankful hearts, let us answer God's gift with our praise, devotion, and service. Amen. The choir is going to continue with our theme of harvest and thanksgiving as we sing the anthem, Reap What You Sow.
children's hymn is number 802, For the Fruit of All Creation. And at the end, I invite the children to join my mom here at the chancel steps. Hymn number 802. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. I think you're all really happy for this weekend, aren't you? Get an extra day off school? I don't need to tell you what this weekend is, do I? No. What is it? Thanksgiving. Well, I'm going to ask you to use your imagination this morning. I have a table here. And I want you to pretend that this is your family's Thanksgiving table. Is there anything on it? Besides the tablecloth? What would be on your what would be on your Thanksgiving table? A turkey. A turkey? Okay. Just a turkey? Yeah. What else? Yeah. Potatoes? Good. What about yours? Carrots, maybe? You don't know? Maybe carrots? Applesauce. Applesauce. And cranberry sauce. And cranberry sauce. All kinds of good things that would be on this table. But what's the first thing we do before we start eating all this wonderful food? We say grace. Thank you. And what is it that we say grace for when we have all this wonderful food on our table? We thank God for the food, that's right. And are there other things that we do when we say the grace, other things that we're thankful for besides food? Maybe a new baby. Maybe health. Maybe good marks at school. These are all different things that we're thankful for, aren't we? Well, 
There's another table in this church where the Christian family, this family in church, also has a meal. Can anybody guess which table that would be? The communion table. The communion table. Can you turn around with me? What does it say? Let's say it together. This do in remembrance of me. Now, those of you who were here last week, you would remember what was on the table, right? There was a white cloth, and there was some grape juice and some bread. You know, that's the church's meal to say thank you to God. We say thank you for all the good food that we have, but the church also takes a chance, and last week was really special, because every church celebrated communion. Every Christian church last Sunday celebrated communion. That means that they were all together very thankful to God for what he has done for us and what he does for us every day. Now, before we go to Sunday school, we're going to say a prayer together. And this is a special little prayer that our children used to say when they were very little. So maybe you could repeat after me, okay? Let's hold our hands. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Thank you. Sunday school now. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. It starts on page 97 in the Pew Bible. The Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance to with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defects, and you may take them from the sheep or the goat. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all, member, all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lamb. That same night they are to eat some meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roasted over a fire, with the head, plates, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is, is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. This, it is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on the dogs of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign on the, for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. 
For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a, as a festival to the Lord, a lasting audience. <coughs> the New Testament reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. It starts on page 1751 in the Pew Bible. Final exhortation. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and pension, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. At the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Our response to this psalm is Psalm 106. Verse 1 to 5, and then skipping to 47 and 48. The first five verses and the last two, you'll find that on page 904, 904, and going to 907. I will read the odd numbered verses, and you may respond with the even verses. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. And then we go to the last two verses, and I'll read 47, and you read 48. <clears throat> Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise the Lord. Our gospel reading is taken from Luke 22, verses 7 to 20, and that's on page 1569. Luke 22, 7 to 20. Page 1569. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. 
After taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We pray that God may bless these readings to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Tomorrow, Canada celebrates Thanksgiving. Even if most Canadians are only thankful for the long weekend, Thanksgiving is a good thing. The holiday will make most people stop and realize how fortunate they are to live in a country and at this time in history. Today, we celebrate Thanksgiving in church. This too is a very good thing. It is good for us to dedicate a worship service to our Creator, to give thanks to our Creator to reflect upon the positive circumstances in which we live and to be grateful to God for our salvation. Last week, we celebrated communion, probably because I was thinking about the topic for my, for my message today. It struck me that our communion is not only a remembrance of Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, but also a thanksgiving the thanksgiving celebration of our redemption. Giving thanks is an important part of Holy Communion. As we read today in Luke, and he, that is Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them. As we read in Luke, Christ created the communion that we celebrated last week, during the ancient Hebrew festival of Passover and the Seder meal. At the appropriate time, Jesus took up, took up the unleavened bread and the wine and used these food items as symbols of his body and blood. He did this to help us understand the thanksgiving aspect of the Lord's Supper. We can learn to better appreciate the thanksgiving of Holy Communion if we take a closer look at the Passover. The instructions for the first Passover meal were relatively simple. Each male head of family was to kill a one-year-old male lamb and at twilight barbecue enough of the meat for his family. He must take some of the blood and paint it on the outdoor posts and the top. At dark, the family must eat the lamb as well as bitter herbs and unleavened bread. They must eat standing up, dressed for immediate departure on a long walk, and they must consume the meal quickly. The occasion was to be called Passover because that night God killed every firstborn person and animal in Egypt, but passed over all the houses with lamb's blood on their doorframe. The Hebrew people were also told that from then on they must always celebrate the anniversary of the Passover. It was to be a week-long celebratory commemoration of their liberation from slavery. The word celebrate is used three times in God's instruction to Moses. Celebration is a possible synonym for Thanksgiving. 
An additional instruction points more directly at the purpose of one aspect of the Passover, the family meal that became known as the Seder. A primary goal of the Passover dinner is that the father must tell his children the purpose of this special meal. The story of how God liberated the Hebrews from their bondage by sacrificing Egypt's firstborn persons and animals would be forgotten unless each generation passed on the ritual and every year anew explained how God had redeemed his people. The Passover meal has endured and over the century the event has become an elaborate ritual with each act symbolizing some aspect of the initial experience. The Seder became a family meal consisting of tasty food, meat, unleavened bread, and much wine. It gained rich and complex symbolic significance. Despite this expansion from a meal prepared and consumed in a hurry, the Seder now is a celebration of the nation's release from Egyptian bondage and, festive th and a festive thanksgiving for a people's spiritual liberation from the slavery of false worship. The Passover Seder contains a number of one or two sentence prayers of grateful thanks for the bread, for the wine, and for creation. A highlight, however, is a beautiful poem called the Dejeuner, a short word that means it would have been enough. Most lively when sung, the lyrics recount various savings events in the history of the Hebrew people. One example is the miraculous crossing of the Red, River, the Red Sea. After each, the, after each such recollection of God rescuing them from a tight spot, the chorus repeats the dejeuner. This act alone would be sufficient to praise God. If God had only liberated them from Egypt, that would be dejeuner. Enough. If he had only parted the Red Sea, that would be dejeuner. Coupled with the several short thanksgiving prayers, the whole of the Passover becomes a great hymn of gratitude. Psalm 106, of which we ran, or read the beginning and the end, is another dimension, or adds another dimension, to the celebration of the Passover, and also our own sacrament of communion, the expression of gratitude. This psalm, whose authorship is far from certain, is one of several that thank God for the loving care of his people. These psalms acknowledge the faithfulness of our Creator. They recognize the relationship between Yahweh and his chosen people is not one of equal responsibilities. Formerly known as a covenant, this agreement or contract required the people only to love God and to worship Him. In return, God promised to redeem His people, to bring them out of the slavery of Egypt, to protect them from their many enemies, and always to bless them spiritually or materially. All that God demanded from the Hebrews was that they worship Him and only Him. In return, he would make them a prosperous and a free nation. In the parts we read, the beginning and the end, Psalm 106 calls on worshipers to give thanks to the Lord for his eternal love and praises for his mighty deeds. In the beginning and ending, between the beginning and the ending, the psalm relates to many times the Israelites complained about their fate, rebelled, chose the decadent culture of their neighbors over the strict laws of the Torah. But time and time again, God reached out his loving hand 
and restored the covenant blessing, the covenant relationship. Thus, confession of wrongdoing is bracketed by thanksgiving. Psalm 106, which we, which we will soon sing, praises and thanks Jehovah for redeeming the Israelites from idol worship. The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are very clear that Jesus and his disciples were celebrating Passover when Christ took the bread and wine, said a thanksgiving prayer, announced the symbolism of the elements, and distributed them among his disciples. In the Passover, Christ and his disciples remembered the Exodus and gave thanks for God's love through the history of the Jewish people. In last week's Lord's Supper, we heard again those liberating words of Jesus, reminding us that he paid with his life the final sacrifice that frees us from the bondage of sin. Our sacrament, like the Passover, is a celebration, an expression of the thankfulness for this act. As Presbyterians, we do not use the word Eucharist, but it is the name that many Christians call their communion. Indeed, the World Council of Churches, in its literature, always uses the word Eucharist because it is universally and ecumenically understood. Even if we ourselves do not use it, we need to be aware of its existence because Eucharist is a Greek word which means thanksgiving. Like the Passover, our sacrament of communion is an act of thanksgiving. As living faith puts it, the Eucharist is thanksgiving to God. We pray for the world and with gratitude offer our lives to God. We celebrate his victory over death and anticipate the joyous feast we shall have in his coming kingdom. In other words, in communion, we, like those of the Jewish faith, also give thanks for our spiritual liberation. This becomes especially clear when we listen and respond to the great prayer of thanksgiving. This is the prayer that begins after the elders have come to the front and are seated behind the table. Someone rest, reminiscent of Passover de Genou, the, the great prayer of thanksgiving is the central part of the liturgy. In our minds, we pray with the minister, thanking God for creating the world and for the gift of life, remembering in broad strokes the history of salvation, giving thanks specifically for the life and death of his son Jesus Christ, and looking forward to our final reconciliation in the kingdom of God. In the words of the prayer, in the words of the prayer, we pray for the world and with gratitude offer our lives to God. We celebrate his victory over death and anticipate the joyous feast we shall have in his coming kingdom. Notice the words, gratitude, celebrate, and joyous feast. As a sacrament of thanksgiving, the Lord's Supper is a celebration. It is a valuable, happy occasion, mainly because it expresses gratitude to God for his great and abiding love. We have come a long way from the time that communion was a solemn ceremony open only to those who had professed their adherence to the creeds and doctrines of their particular denomination. In some churches, most members did not, some members did not dare to take communion because they felt unworthy or in the case of Roman Catholics, they had not gone to confession. There was an expression, fencing the table. 
basically shutting out those who did not keep to the creeds. For those shut out, communion was not a celebration. It was not thanksgiving. Yet, I think we can do more and be more consciously making this communion a real celebration. For example, can we learn from the joyful spirit of the Jewish Passover meal, especially its family orientation and the participation of their children? I believe that we need reminding that the Lord's table is the Eucharist, the sacrament of thanksgiving. We need to remember that communion, like the Passover, defines who we are, children of God, redeemed by His Son, Jesus Christ. For this, we must be truly thankful. This, we must celebrate. May you have a blessed Thanksgiving. We respond to the message by singing hymn 71. It is good to give thanks to you, Lord. The music and the lyrics are by John L. Bell from the Iona community. It's likely an unfamiliar tune, but after six verses we should be quite accustomed to singing it, I think.
that God has given us, we give thanks, and we take now our offering to the Lord. After which we will sing the doxology, which is hymn number 79. We pray now our prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Where do we begin, Lord? Where indeed do we begin to thank you? We are silenced because we have so much. Food, shelter, peace, and possessions. Perhaps with King David we must begin by confessing the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. We thank you, our Father, for providing us with so much more than our daily bread. Our grocery stores are overflowing with a staggering cornucopia of different foods and delicacies. Teach us again that we are also dependent on the vagaries of weather, the labor of farmers, and the workers, many of the latter who live away from home and work for extremely low wages. Bless the work of Bridges to Hope for, for feeding the hungry. We thank you for the many volunteers and staff who make this endeavor possible. Thank you, our Creator, for shelter from heat and cold, rain and snow, homes to which we can return whenever we want. 
Bless the hundreds of thousands of homeless folk, those who have fled floods, cyclones, earthquakes, and war. Be also with the aimless wanderers in our wealthy cities. We thank you for our loving provider, for the many organizations who furnish shelter, a warm meal, clothing, socks. Thank you, Lord, for placing us in a land of peace where we can come and go as we please. Be with those people who live in war zones and fear the roar of rockets and bombs who every hour of every day and night fear for their lives. Thank you for the peacemakers. Bless their efforts. Thank you, God, for the privilege we have of worshiping you here this morning without fear of persecution. Give strength to those who are persecuted for your name's sake. Thank you, great Jehovah, for our youth and our youth worker and her assistants. Thank you also for the volunteers that manage our Sunday school. Bless them all, we pray. Thank you, our Sovereign, for our families and our friends. Refresh again the love for each other. Enrich those who suffer from loneliness and despair. Thank you, loving healer, for health. Comfort those who are ailing in body and in mind. Lift their spirits and grant healing. In a moment of silence, we take private time to pray for those who are close to us and those we know by name. Grant our prayers, our God and our Redeemer. We thank you, Lord, for Jim Steele. We thank you for giving him 90 years. Thank you for the enormous contribution he has made to our congregation. Above all, we thank you, God, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who made atonement for our sins. We pray this all in your name, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is 321, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
there, the, there's refreshments in the hall immediately after the service, and all visitors are, are welcome. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.